Here we are at the famous Schist plates. Again, we're not sure that it's Schist. We'll have our geologist Susan Moore look at it. But these are the famous so-called flywheels that Hakim led me to early, first 1992 to show me. And said, this device spun. Obviously, it is listed by, when found by Sir Walter Emery, as a votive, a votive for lotuses. But why is there a spoke in the middle? Mm -hmm. Obviously, to turn, to spin. Now, how the whole mechanism works, because people on, on, on Facebook have gotten this all wrong, they only look at this. Right. This is part of the process. This would spin, send out a sound wave, this would be a mirror, would reflect it back. When two, two sound waves coincide, they form what are called sinusoidal waves. Uh -huh. In the well, it's been proved by acoustic engineer Tom Danley in the 90s, in the wells of sinusoidal waves, there is no gravity. Oh, so Hakim said, spinning an ultrasonic frequency, produced a sound vibe, the vibe came back, and when it came there, it created an anti-gravity field, and this is how the stones were lifted. Hakim always maintained, to deal with all this megaton, megalithic tonnage, you have to deal with the gravity. Right. And he took this with the device with it. And why would they use a material like this rather than metal? It's very, well, they always prefer stone over metal. Stone for its vibratory quality. Oh, of course, yeah. But, Susan has said, this is why we need to bring her up here. Uh, uh, we go soon. Yeah. She doesn't know why they need